Hello everyone, in this video I'll go over a fixture plate design that holds in blank keycaps, enabling to then add legends on top of them. And I'll try to do this video in one take. So if you have a resin printed blank keycap and you want to add legends like these examples on it, you need a fixture plate that you then load into your machine. Now, there are methods to add legends. I experimented with laser. I prefer UV printer because it enables to have colors and you can even add like pictures and it's very, very customizable. Now, why do you need this fixture plate? A fixture plate basically holds your product in a pattern that you know. So here it's a 10 by 10 grid and I have a Google drawing that matches this 10 by 10 grid. And I can then load this into the machine, send my image file to the machine and print onto it. Now, although this machine is great because you can load in objects, it goes back and forth, the print head goes left and right, and you can therefore print images, it is dumb. It doesn't know where this jig is. So the first thing you need to do is uh, locate this jig somewhere on the machine. And to do that, I have printed myself this bracket that grabs the corner of this build plate and offsets it to the print area, which starts actually here. Now you'll notice the 0.75 degree, that's because I bought this machine used. The gantry is a bit off axis and I think it's more risky for me to fix it. Like if I try to fix it, I might make this worse. So I just account for it in my jig. And so now you have keycaps in a grid pattern that matches your file and you know where this is. So you can launch the print, see if it's centered. I have this keycap with a cross and I can align everything. And if it's off center, then I uh, put a X and Y offset onto the machine. So this is great for simple when you flat keycaps. This machine loves to print on flat surfaces, a bit, a bit like a laser, there is a focal point, which is like one millimeter. Well, it doesn't have a focal point. It's actually the closer you are to the print head, the better. So you, I'm aiming to be one to two millimeters off of the uh, print head. And to do that, well, the challenge that this introduces is if you have a keycap set, like these sculpted DES keycaps, or there are other keycaps, like let's look at some examples. Over here, Cat is sculpted, Lame is sculpted, Cherry is sculpted. And uh, I mean, there are other examples of sculpted keycaps. And when you want to print on these surfaces, your jig needs to take that into account. So the way I went around this is, I designed the uh, jig to take into account the angle and offset the height of the keycap such that it all prints on a flat plane. Now something that might not be apparent is that I've also scooted these stems up and down because as you're angling it, the top surface is now no longer centered with respect to, to the grid of your actual print file. So I had to account for that. Then the next challenge comes in when you want to print, let's say two hand because like this jig, uh, holds in enough keycap for one hand. If I have a file with two hands, I need a bigger jig, but my Bamboo A1 Mini is limited. Or if I want to print a full keyboard, well, to do that, I separate the jig in half. And now I need to locate this into the machine. And FDM printers, although they're great overall, the outer walls are imperfect. So if um, if I put this together, it actually, it's, it's not perfectly aligned. And by the way, if you've noticed these are off center, I'll get to the reason later. But imagine you have, so here I have a DES jig and I have over there the second hand. I need a way to reliably place them on this machine. So if we remove the old build plate and I show you the solution I came up with, well, you have basically a now multiple part system where you have an initial tray where you have a grid of holes and you align this here. And then in these holes, you could put in uh, pegs. So let me move my reamer and we'll talk about this in a few seconds. So here I have pegs that are five millimeter and these pegs, this peg system uh, enables us to overcome the inaccuracy of FDM printers. So again, an FDM printer, all the outer walls are imperfect. So I set the model to be five millimeters but if I were to try and put this here, it wouldn't fit it at first. So what I, you have to do is get yourself a reamer, which is, it's like a drill bit, but it can't start the hole. What it can do is make the hole ever so slightly larger to match a specific dimension. Now, this is the five millimeter and there are other sizes. Actually, oh, it's a, yeah, it's a five. My five is missing. Anyways, so then you ream the hole and you get a very tight fit. Like this doesn't wiggle. And then you put in pins into your jig 
And now you can locate your second part very accurately with respect to the first. So I can put in a jig like here. And uh, actually, if I were to load in these two objects, what I do is I'd load them like this and then have this one matching uh, like that. And you get the picture with this peck system, you effectively can build a way larger tray. Now, uh, I've added this wall just because it intersects the laser and it acts as a safety feature. But as you noticed on my other example, um, just to go back, actually this showcases it well. The, one of the issues is that this is uh, not held in properly. So I typically clamp this so this one doesn't move and then I put this here. And what happened in the other example is I had this these two jigs uh, these two jigs were in that machine and I did my whole alignment. It looked great. Unfortunately, I bumped ever so slightly the jig. So it did that, but less pronounced to the point where I didn't notice it. Ran the print and it didn't print well. So to accommodate for that, I went back in my design and combined these two parts. So now I have this fancy one, which does both functions. Like it has these four walls on the corners that locate over here and I have my spot to clamp it and then I have the holes for the pins as you can see these are snug now you need these pins to be fairly deep so that they're very uh, straight up but unfortunately this brings in warping issues like if you look at this one that my friend printed on his p1 I had to sand it down because it did the whole banana thing so uh, this funky design basically accounts for warpage. And then I can have other smaller plates over here and you can combine, you can basically load in this like that, I believe, right? It has the same holes. I can push it in and then I align the holes and I put the pins and where is the other part? I can align this everywhere. So this accounts for uh, the user error. But now this jig is very different than the one that you might have seen at the beginning, this one, which is fairly flat. And this is to take into account something, an oversight that I had done. These MX low profile keycaps, their stems are not flush with the uh, sidewalls. So what happens is that once you load them into the jig, you'll notice that I can lay them at an angle and they will hold this angle. So I tried to like uh, take another jig and like flatten them out before I loaded it in. But this is a bit of a tedious, unreliable uh, method prone to user error. And even if you do it, sometimes like you'll push it and it'll spring back to an angle. And another issue is that these stems can, these keycaps can rotate a bit. Like I can hold a rotational uh, misalignment. So I went ahead and redesigned the stem holders, went through a few iterations, trying some different settings and dimensions. And I came uh, down to this design, which basically now the sidewalls are resting flush. So the keycap is very well held and it uh, can't rotate like this is way uh, better. And I have these slots so that I can put in my finger or a keycap removal tool. So there we have it. In this video, I went ahead and showed you how I can um, print on one new keycaps, on angled keycaps. I can effectively make bigger jigs for bigger prints. And uh, something I glanced over is that this jig now holds in keycaps in a keyboard layout and it matches my Google drawing, which is just um, laid out in a keyboard layout with the same dimensions. So I can go in the drawing and change the font, the colors, the dimensions, add pictures and quickly just run a print. If you stuck until now, well, thanks a lot for watching all of this. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have comments, questions, tips on improving, and let me know what you want to see next. Take care.